Okay, it says I'm live. I feel like it goes live earlier than I, I think it does, but I wait until it specifically tells me I'm live before I start talking, just in case. Hey, Alexander. Yes, you finally caught a stream before it started. What would Walter Sullivan do? <laughs> Probably nothing good. <laughs> Hi, Neo. Let me pop out this chat. <clears throat> there ain't no party like a Dina watch party. <laughs> Hi, Special Iron. Hi, Shadow Master Z. Oh, it's the first time you've been to a stream in a while. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Hi, Nate. I shouldn't be watching this on my data plan, but my cat is on me and I haven't hooked up the router. <laughs> oh, hi, Antoine. <clears throat> hi, Scott. Say hi to Brandon. Been around since before I had 20,000 subs. I think I, I, I think I still don't have, I still don't have 20,000 subs. I think I have 15,000. The last time I looked, I haven't looked in a while. I kind of gave up because like I stopped getting subscribers because YouTube stopped uh, promoting my videos. <clears throat> Anyway, thank you. Glad you liked the videos. <laughs> oh, you have your friend Brandon. Okay. Hi, Brandon. <laughs> uh, had my office work do, to do for Christmas. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> ah, 17,000. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I think like two years ago, I, I hit 15,000 and I was looking forward to hitting 20 and then I just, just kind of slowed down. <clears throat> you say hi to Brandon, you'll get the bad ending. I only ever played the arcade version once many years ago, but I've seen it since and I like the differences. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, let's just get started here. Uh, I guess I'll have this all the way up. I don't know. Let me know if it's too loud. It should be a good volume, but, um, you know, the volume level kind of um changes with these videos Oh, that's too loud for me. Hey, this is Dina and welcome to the den. Now in the late 80s, Baby's first game den. God. A work do is where everyone for my work goes to a place to eat. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I've heard that term before. And remember, kids, winners don't use drugs. Except steroids. <laughs> yeah, I thought there was a word left out there. So. I'm sorry, but I pretty much always Hi, Red Spade. Can't hear anything? Crush. And then he just drops dead right in front of you. Man, I love this. Wait a minute. It's possible. Let me look at this. I'm sorry. I'm, I may have muted the desktop. 
I muted the desktop. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'll start over. I'll start over. I'm so sorry. I had the desktop muted because it, it, I thought it was going to help with, um, I thought it was, it was going to help when I was doing Silent Hill too. I'll just start over. Okay. Now let me know if the volume is good. Special Iron said it's pretty quiet. I thought he meant the chat. I'm like, is it? <laughs> hey, this is Dina, and welcome to the Den. Now, in the late 80s and animation? early 90s, um, um, kind of when I was on. still desperately trying to hang on to my Atari 2600, one of my favorite things to do was to go down to this corner store that Oops. always had a couple of arcade machines set up. Oh, thank you now for I the played subscriptions, some pretty good games Sober Hamster. There. When I think about those times, the game that instantly like comes to name. mind is definitely Golden Axe. And remember, kids, winners don't use drugs. Except steroids. Those are okay. Remember a video a long time ago of you showing some of the process for the intros I'm you made. sorry, yeah, I actually watched that last week. <laughs> unless she, like, really sucks. On last week's, um, it's just kind of a last girl week's power watch thing, party. I guess. Boy, this game is just brutal right from the beginning. Jeez, I mean, your friend comes problems. limping in, all drenched in blood, using his sword as a crutch. And then he just drops dead right in front of you. Yeah, but I'm thinking about maybe, um, maybe modeling Man, uh, avatars game. for VR. Speaking of brutal, for look people what the bad guys do. He is kicking an old lady. I'm selling them. I'm gonna put a stop to that nonsense right now. All kidding aside, though, I just love the look of this game. I mean, it may look kind of dated, but it's just it's <laughs> it's really, <boot>. really good <laughs> art. It's like a. I like to think of it as a Boris Vallejo done. painting come to life okay. because I'm a fan of Boris Vallejo. But I mean, you know, it's like a, you didn't miss much, Gojira. It's a, it and I can actually be started based on Conan or He-Man or, or something. It's just that so kind of I'd started over. Sort of medievalish fantasy type. Not setting. even two minutes into Golden. Lots of sword fighting and magic use and monsters. And that stuff's always fun. And it's very well it's represented It's called sword and here. sorcery, Dina. <laughs> I didn't know the term for that genre. The skeletons are cool, but they are such a pain in the ass to fight. Yeah, taste my blade, bitch! Ugh! Stay up there! Winners don't use drugs, but cheats. This is a really cool-looking level, but you don't get the full effect of it until the very end. So was this the oh. first use of the cat mascot? Oh, look yeah, it at was that. actually. You were riding on the back of a giant eagle that whole time and you didn't even know. Of course, Hi, I guess the giant feathers and the all the clouds flying by should have tipped you off, but they didn't. What the hell were you smoking? <laughs> He's got pretty <laughs> blue eyes too. Check it out, this is one of my favorite things about this game. BAM! Just knock someone off their dragon and take oh. it from them. Yeah, dragons aren't very loyal, apparently. They'll just side with whoever the hell happens to be riding on them at the time. Yeah, just like a hooker! Shut up, Lee. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah. You can be really cheap with the dragons, too. That's why they're such a hot commodity. Yeah. Now, this game really was like really good looking for its time, but what you also have to keep in mind is that, for your as I said, I was still playing my Atari 2600 since, uh, at the time. Since 2008, apparently. So, <laughs> when I was playing my games at home, and then going to the corner store and playing those arcade games, I was basically yeah, VR going chat avatars, this. that's what I was thinking. It's a huge market for it if you have the time to learn all the confusing stuff for it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, maybe I could model it and to someone this. else could do the, uh, Here it the comes. Tech, techie stuff. I don't know. Whoosh! Oh, the video's a little loud. Yeah, take that. <laughs> Bam! Big difference okay. in quality Turn it down and a little presentation bit, everybody. there, uh, so let me know you can see why I was so impressed. And I just got uh, okay. so hooked on Second this game. Time I mean, now that I'm older, I think back let to... Me know. How much money I wasted how it is at, at this point on just getting quarters to play this game, and it just it makes me cringe to think how much money I wasted on it. But sadly, the, the game did not stay there forever, and it was eventually yeah, switched out for another hard. game. I think it was that side-scrolling uh, Punisher game where you could play as the of, Punisher. Or oh Nick yeah, Fury. that Punisher game. And that game. game's okay, but it's not Golden Axe. It was at this point that my Atari 2600 was finally on its last legs. And my oh, thank you for the donation, Red Spade. System. Of course, I found out that uh, 
Golden Axe was available on Sega thrice Genesis, but of course the Genesis was way too thine, expensive. Thrice to thine and thrice to mine, so I ended up and getting thrice an again to make up nine. <laughs> and I did play some okay. good games on that. I'm glad I had I got my a poem NES, with it too. but oh my god, I wanted a Genesis so much more. Genesis does It took does a very Nintendo. long time. I think it was uh, around the time the NES finally phased out. I finally got my Genesis, and of course the first game I got was Golden Axe. Now, as a standalone thing, there is really nothing yeah, the wrong with the Genesis are also version. In, uh, I mean, it plays well, it looks that. really good for a Genesis game, and all the important aspects are there. I mean, this is Golden Axe, there is no mistaking that. And while I did notice the differences between the Genesis and the arcade version, was it really the game didn't bother me at the time. I didn't care, I was just I happy think it to was, play um, Golden Axe again. I think by the time I started doing the game, Dan, I was, uh... I don't think this was scripted, but I think I had, like, a list of bullet points so I, that I would know what to talk about. How many people in the comments told you, um, actually, that's not a dragon? None? Who would say that isn't a dragon? Although, now that I've had a chance to play the arcade version again, I definitely prefer that over the I've Genesis I've been following version. you since literally 2010 I mean, I know that goes without saying, of course the arcade version is going to be better, but into Silent Hill. I'm so it's just happy kind of interesting noticing things. Thanks, Brooke. So, just for fun, I'm going to point them out here. Well, this is kind of random. Oh, now I'm They've all comparing been mirrored. it to the Genesis. So the ones that were left-handed were right-handed and vice versa. Whatever. My first two uh, Game Den videos involved me, like, doing side-by-side Yeah, side we don't get to see Alex get killed in the Genesis version. We just get to hear our character talk about it. Obviously has a lot less impact. <laughs> you and unpull a Bahamut out of the air. <laughs> this one, though, is just unforgivable. Look what Still they did to my Still shame that PT was removed and Silent Hills was cancelled, yeah. I mean, I know the Genesis has a limited never number of colors and all that. It just seems that they could have done something with that eye to make it look a little more interesting. It wouldn't have to be blue, but they could have made it stand out somehow. Now, here's something I never noticed until I compared the two side by side. The colors on the Genesis version are really garish, whereas in the arcade version they're much more subtle, almost pastel. The arcade version's color scheme definitely fits the mood of the game a lot better. Here's something I always thought was cool. Every <laughs> arcade once in a while, a crowd of terrified, <laughs> screaming villagers runs past you. And here's what you get in the Genesis version. <laughs> yeah, I'd say the yeah, arcade YouTube version poops were a thing in a few better. of my videos, too. In Death the Adder's entrance in the arcade version? Ew. The NES had basically zero quality control when and it came to games. And Death Adder's entrance NES in the quality Genesis meant nothing. Version. Otherwise, the AVGN wouldn't have showcased so Look, many bad NES games. Head. That's true. Oh, oh, there he is! Wow. Another neat little oh, detail yeah, that's Thunderhead. missing is that you don't most see the bad guys beat him. up on civilians in the Genesis version. I used to think that this had to do with the limitations of the Genesis, but now that I think of it, I think they were just trying to leave out some of the more brutal scenes. That would also explain why they left out Alex's death in the beginning. This was pre Mortal Kombat. Just recently Kombat, I realized that the PT demo very, felt very nothing like a Silent Mortal Hill Kombat. game, so I'm guessing it would have still been a Golden Axe was a really the Silent Hill Genesis fans, game. even if it would have been so a good game. I mean, a lot of damn, Silent Hill fans liked the the um liked the demo, so I don't know why they would have. As I said, though, I think the they Genesis version is a little bit lacking when that came out. If that were the version. case, but I think they were aware of that, so they tried to throw in a couple neat little extra things to make up for it. For one thing, there's a duel mode, and it's, well, not really like a fighting game, but it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, and you go through and fight each character one at a time. Well, the way to Death Adder slowly manifests get. out of those snakes. But also, yeah, the arcade cool. mode has a different ending than the arcade version of the game did. Now, here's the ending to the arcade oh, game. Oh, wyvern. What the fuck even is a wyvern? It's just another type of dragon. <laughs> it's just a dragon Death with another Adder. name. People are dumb. Rescue the king and princess. Maybe it's a dragon that doesn't breathe fire. I don't know exactly what a wyvern is, but I know it's a D&D &D thing. And then the message comes up saying, Hey, you beat the game. Good for you. The end. In the Genesis version, you beat Death Adder. Um, eventually, you... The arcade version gives you monkey Rescue the mimes. king and princess. Boy, it 
sure takes a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> then they say, Thank you, Tyrus, but Death Adder is in another castle. <laughs> Golden axe Basically the what they did here is they added another level and another boss soundtrack. fight. Yeah. Which sounds really cool, but... I talk about that in this video that a lot of the um, versions of Golden Axe that were made for better systems still... they were It was still like the Genesis version just with the music improved. <laughs> I was always disappointed that they didn't directly port the arcade version. I don't know, maybe there's a reason why they couldn't do that, but... Well... Okay, I'll just show you the whole thing. Sped up and edited, <laughs> of course. There really isn't a lot to it. Look the background is pretty like repetitive, copper. and also there Wyverns are dragons holes everywhere that you can fall legs. into, and oh, okay. you have to so dodge those while hundreds of legs. bad guys are gang raping you. Don't the dragons it's really in this kind game of have annoying, legs, actually. Just never Not noticed. that much fun. Okay, so now you're at the final, final boss. <laughs> Sounds like a NyQuil finally. and Dayquil equivalent for dragons. And it turns out that it's just a palette swapped Death Adder. Only he's called Deathbringer. He looks bored to be in this game. Look at him. I don't pay me enough for this. Hey, kid. Can I bum a cigarette? Eileen's voice. I'll be in my trailer. He is super cheap, though. Not only will he knock you down, but while you're down, he'll do a special attack and basically take out two of your bars instead of one. What I didn't know uh, at the time I made this game is that you can actually do that kind of attack against enemies, too, where you... You hit them, and then as they're in midair, you do a magic attack. It'll like they'll take they'll take two bars instead of one, like like Death Adder does here, or Deathbringer, whatever the fuck his name. That's is. just not right. I didn't know that at the time I made it, though. It's kind of a fun trick to do. But at least he is susceptible to the kick move if you time oh, God. it just right. Captain S reference coming. Speaking of the kick move, you may have noticed that I do that a lot in both versions of the game. I know it's cheap, but it's just so easy, I can't resist. Have I considered doing any new game dens recently? Kick, kick, kick! I always like how kick you all day. games and really Don't you guys ever learn? That'll teach him to stay dead. Yeah, nobody was doing that. Blue dragons, time. get the kick! More people you want some too, big now, boy? But... Giants, get the kick! Everything gets the kick! <laughs> okay, maybe something shouldn't get the kick. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> Okay, now, I set out to do some nice, uh, positive commentary on Golden Axe. So you may be wondering why I've spent so much yeah, time Yeah, the problem with game dens is they take version. a really long time to do. And well, I don't like know, I the said, last game den I did was Echo the here. Dolphin, and it barely but here's got the any kicker. views, and it took Golden me like Axe three has come out on more advanced systems since the Genesis, like but Sega yeah, CD, I'd still like example. to do more, I just don't have But every single one of those is a port of the Genesis version. There is no excuse for that. These systems could totally handle the arcade version. I guess it was just easier to port the Genesis <laughs> version, so that's why well, they did. In the chat. But boy, was I disappointed. The only way to play the arcade version was, well, to go to an arcade or play an emulator. Until now, the arcade version of Golden Axe is now finally available on Xbox Live Arcade. Personally, I don't have it, so I'm stuck with ROMs, but if you have it, totally download it. It's completely worth it. Here's something that's kind of interesting. Remember how I described the visuals in Golden Axe as a Boris Vallejo Not painting come to life? Apparently I wasn't the only one who thought that. Look at the box art. Now this isn't Boris, as as but I'm the artist is obviously it's copying a dragon, his style. It's a dragon. Yeah, now look at this character right. that's supposed to be Tyrus Flair, the Dragons Amazon, like anything, compared to really a piece of like a classic exist. Boris Vallejo painting. And while I'm at it, look how inaccurate it is to the in-game version of her. Aside from the fact that it's a scantily clad chick <laughs> with a sword, how is this even the same character? Everything gets now let's take a look at Axe Battler, the Barbarian. Wow, long blonde hair? Where did that come from? <laughs> he doesn't even have the right weapon. Okay, well I guess I can forgive that. I mean, the game is called Golden Axe. I guess they wanted the one in the also, foreground the way his hand is axe, rotated doesn't make sense. And they his, figured his Axe hand. Battler was more cool looking than the dwarf. I can at least see the logic with that decision. Speaking of the dwarf, it looks like he's the only one they actually got right. But he's pretty hard to screw up, really. He's pretty much a stereotypical dwarf with a viking helmet. Now, I know it was a very common thing back then for box art to be inaccurate to the game, but these characters are very iconic to me, and I would really like to have seen them represented a little more accurately. Now, with that yeah, said, let's take a look at the box art for Golden Axe 2. Okay, now that is just awesome. Yeah, the YouTube algorithm really doesn't like my videos on my wall. They definitely got it right. And look, they went all out this time and actually- Although, you know what? For some weird reason, the algorithm is pushing the fucking, um, 
that stupid little uh, compilation video I did for um, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream where I did all the I did all the endings. I did like uh, the ending compilation for I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, which was just like an extra video. For some weird reason, the YouTube algorithm is pushing that because I'm getting a lot of people commenting on that the last couple days going like, what is this? <laughs> it's kind of annoying. If they were going to push one of my I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream videos, I wish they'd push one of the Game Den ones. <laughs> <clears throat> they had the man himself do this one. Tyrus looks good. He used some artistic license, obviously, but her hair is the right color, her outfit is the right color, and she's got the right kind of weapon. RTX it's definitely Xbox her. Axe Battler. He's probably the most accurate. Coloring and details are right on, and <laughs> he's pretty hot, too. Not that it matters, but it's a nice touch. Again, I the think, dwarf uh, looks I good. Think he's also uh, like I said, he's pretty hard to screw up. He's wearing blue again, which is kind of weird, but he's still pretty close to the way he should look. In case you haven't figured it out by now, I haven't actually mentioned it, but it's been playing all the way through this episode. I love the music in this game. It's catchy, it sounds kind of like That's tribal music, and most of it is very dark <laughs> and intense. It fits scales. the mood of the game very well. <laughs> Technically, he was a I got a hold dragon, of the soundtrack so recently, and I've just been listening to it nonstop lately. I just love it. Finally, I have got to show Xbox you the closing Live cinema. Arcade logo is a this has to be the craziest the and most uh, non-canonical ending in video game history. Yeah, I haven't even played an and Xbox it is hilarious. machine in a long time. Hand oh paid. no, the bad guys escaped from the arcade machine! What are we gonna do? Movie posters, yeah. Those were cool. Here come our heroes. Go get them, guys! Have a like and a good stream. Check Thanks, out this DNF. Japanese background with all the English. <laughs> I just love the idea of all these guys wreaking havoc in downtown Tokyo or whatever. Video game doi doi. I don't know what that is. Hokari sweat. That looks like it says, oh no, it's Haga. I thought that <laughs> looked like it said Maga for a second. That would have been awful. Uh, yeah, that's Japanese words. Okay. There's Move really over, Godzilla. Much. It's not really that much, uh, English. It's so cheesy, I love it. <laughs> the dwarf got left behind. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Fabio game cover. Yeah, you mean let's uh, check out my score. I already forgot what game that was, but yeah, Ouch. that's like my favorite example of a. Game I have cover not that played this game in a while. Okay, game. bite me. <laughs> actually, a C isn't too bad, all things considered. It actually grades you not based on how many enemies you kill, but how many continues you use. So you could totally beat the game and still get like an F. So there you have it, Golden Axe. It's not the best game ever. But it's an old favorite of mine that I used to get really jazzed about back in the day. And it's good mindless entertainment once in a while. So if you've never played it and I've managed to spark some interest, go get it on Xbox Live Arcade or download Everything the ROM. The you won't kick, be disappointed. Felt a and if you have course. played it, oh, maybe I've managed oh, to inspire you to bring it out and mess with car. it again. I never even That's it for now. See you next that. time. Ah! There we go. <laughs> it was pretty obvious what music I used for this. It's <laughs> sorry, Brett. <laughs> this is back when I used to keep the credits going as long as I could. Iron Sword, that was the name of that game. I used to keep the credits as long as I could so I could do my whole sequence. <laughs> Special thanks, Optimus Prime. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot this came out shortly after Valentine's Day of that year. <laughs> a woman with abs on a game cover that's rare and hot. <laughs> You must be referring to the yeah. Boris Vallejo tends to draw strong women now. In his earlier paintings, that he a lot of times he had women as the, you know, damsel in distress. But he he like actually puts muscles on female warriors now. Eye candy for everyone on that box. <laughs> hey, Dina here, and welcome to the den. The now, ginger haired woman on the background of this video. Um, whoops. 
What are you talking about? So you could talk if you have played it. That? That's uh, Reno from Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> I assume that's who you're talking talking about. Yeah, that's where I was. Falco was inspired by Chinese dragons. Yeah, that sounds about right, actually. <laughs> Falco in the book is more lion-like. Hey, Dina here. Yeah, I Welcome think I remember hearing that. Now, if you've seen some of my other reviews, you already know that I love horror-themed games. And really, they've been around <laughs> <Fun> forever. <fucks. laughs> but back then, for the most part, they were either pretty tame or they managed to fly under the radar for whatever reason. But then Mortal Kombat came out in 1992 and all hell broke loose. It was such a huge success yeah, the other person there was that Walter it started Solomon, a whole lot of controversy he about look video like game ginger. violence. As in whether or not it affects <laughs> kids on some deep psychological level, and whether or not these violent video games should be banned or at least regulated. California is now home to an estimated 175,000 oh, to 200,000 gang members. From 1986 to 1991, in this so, state, so glad to see you focusing on what's important. For juveniles for murder increased by 135 percent. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Did he just blame gang violence on Mortal Kombat? Wow. Technically, no, but he was probably anyway. That. It was Mortal Kombat that triggered the ESRB rating system in 1994. Then, in 1998, <laughs> another fighting game came along that pushed yeah, the boundaries even cool. further. And in fact, it would have been the first game ever to receive an AO rating. I say would have <laughs> because this game was so controversial that it was canceled and never officially released. Of course, I'm talking about Thrill Kill, and <laughs> damn. I first heard about this game through video game magazines, and it Tina was loves just horror games. I had no place. idea. <laughs> I was just so fascinated with the concept of this game. It just looked so gory and so messed up that I just wanted to play it so bad, and I just could not wait for it to come out. But as I said, it got canceled, and I was so unhappy. <laughs> the sad now, kitty. Little did I know at the time. It was the first time the I used that, I think, The unfinished version of Thrill Kill was all over the internet by this time. Because I also used a happy kitty later but on. But I didn't get my first computer until, like, a year later. Yeah, I know I was way behind the times. So it's not like I had I used any a lot of random it. images in these earlier videos. But as it turned out, I had this friend who had a friend who had another friend who downloaded the game, and what it comes down to is we all got copies of it. So <laughs> didn't you know there was no that game violence in the 80s happy. or 70s? So what I ended up with was the early beta version. Um, it was basically a bare bones game. It was really just gameplay and title screen, and that was about it. Oh, it also had the practice mode. But it had all the important elements, and the gameplay was completely intact. So that's the most important thing. Oh, hang on, I gotta pause. The problem is that it would take forever to load. Um, sometimes it would practically lock up, making you think that it was about to crash, but it actually rarely would do that. Um, after a while, it would just continue. It would also crash occasionally, but not really that often. And there was no background music or FMVs. Anytime you would get to a point where there would be an FMV, you would see this video showing Virgin's logo. So you can imagine how disappointed I was to beat the game, and instead of seeing a character's ending FMV, I would see this. Frankly, this animation just hurts my eyes for some reason, so I hate looking at it. I feel like it's going to give me a seizure or something. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, while it isn't fair to really criticize an unfinished game, okay. I will admit that these are flaws, and they are they kind of minor annoyances. Now. But honestly, they really didn't detract from my enjoyment of the, the game. I mean, I enjoyed case. it that much. I just think this game is so much fun. But, you know, after I played it for a while and, you know, you know beat it with, you know, so many you know. characters and on so many difficulty levels... And, I just kind of found myself wanting This is how more. you can tell I, I wasn't scripted yet. I said, you version. know, like ten times in that one so, sentence. Some people didn't even believe it, but there was rumors going around that, that the there was comments. a nearly finished version of Thrill Kill that was circulating around the internet. And by now, I did have internet access, but I wasn't very internet savvy. Plus, I only had like a 56k modem, so it's not like I could really do any downloading. 
So a friend of mine yeah, directed me I don't think Doom was this, uh, responsible for the ESRB rating system. It was kind of a combination of um, Mortal Kombat and uh, video Night game, Trap. Third party peripherals and games. Random images Only now do fun, I realize yeah. what a huge gamble I was taking by trying to order something from a site like that. But it worked out fine, and I ended up with my very own copy of the nearly finished version of Thrill Kill. Thrill Kill now, Champion Edition. about this version of the game is that it has more things that you can unlock. It has the FMV. You can barely hear me over this the video? It really just about feels like a finished game. Okay, it I'll turn the video down a little more. It also up and such, but it's not too bad. It depends on what you're playing it on. But what's really interesting about this version is that they did some mild censoring. I also have the mic kind of far away from me, which probably doesn't help. By this point, I think they were figuring out that getting an AO the Virgin logo animation with the idea. eye makes so my eyes hurt so much. Campaign. Yeah, it, I hate that some thing. Some of it's kind of silly. They left in all the gore and the violence, but the characters who were originally Okay, I just turned the video down, so let me know if it's any better. Briefs ...and just minor little things like that. Basically, they removed all the borderline nudity and a lot of the sexual Here stuff. Here we go with the side-by-side -side comparison the again. a little bit. Belladonna's moan mm -hmm. was replaced by a giggle, <laughs> which wouldn't bother me except that it's the exact same giggle that Violet has. <laughs> and using it on Belladonna as well kind of takes something away from Violet. It makes her a little less unique. The only change they made I can think of that doesn't involve sex or nudity. Hi, Chainsaw is George. I love the game den videos. Also, I remember the love of that game Thrill Kill. Basically, still has it goes from being a gross the first version. Oh, you still have the first sound. version on PS1. That's cool. To, well, this. Yummy. Not only is that kind of silly, but it doesn't even make yeah, sense. Yeah, I saw the Kid I mean, video. You can't I'd... say yummy while you're biting into something. Well, yeah. I guess you can, but it come out like... <laughs> His take is a little different than mine. I'll just leave it yeah. at that. Whatever. Anyway, for the most part, they took out some of the sexual stuff, but left in all the extreme violence. I, I would guess that they probably just hadn't gotten around to taking those out yet. But who knows? You know, in America, violence is completely allowed in the media. The volume but, is violence, you know, balanced well. Okay, good. Out, but that's another rant for another time. Anyway, I hope you all appreciate the. Oh yeah, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one where Lee gets I in trouble. I had a hell of a time getting these games to play. As far as I can recall, the best way to play Thrill Kill is with a modded PlayStation. As in, it has that little chip soldered into it. The game is basically a lot less glitchy, and I think it okay, even had good. background music, me the sound or at least better. the nearly finished version did. Even once I got a PS2 and didn't even really need a PlayStation anymore, I held on to that modded PlayStation because I knew at some point I was going to want to play through um, the Mostly because that's what my husband was doing. Unfortunately, someone let it get and broken, and while we were moving and things like mostly because that's what my husband was doing. Let it get broken while we were moving. Speak of the so devil. Now I no have a modded <laughs> um, that's what my husband was doing, and I just kind of like I started plan, off doing videos no on his channel, and I just either. kind of continued it. Then a friend of mine managed to find me an emulator. But it would only play the Until beta I got version tired of doing and not <laughs> the nearly finished censored version, and I really wanted both for Thrill this episode. Remaster. Eventually, we managed to get both versions working on our little portable PS1 how the said yummy. using uh, Breaker <laughs> Pro. And that works great. The only problem is that the door no longer closes, so all I need is something to keep the door closed while I'm playing, and I'm golden. Also, someone. Kind of he Someone to redeem himself made a comment about this. I can't remember where the comment, if it was in the comment section somewhere, but somebody thought that was a real cat. <laughs> like, you underestimate how small the, you underestimate how small the PS1 is. By finding a version of Thrill Kill that is nearly finished and uncensored. So this <laughs> is like the perfect version of Thrill Kill I always wanted. Only took me 10 years to get it. So for the rest of the episode, this is the version of Thrill Kill I'll be showcasing. Now, playing Thrill Kill is definitely a unique experience. You play as some sort of freak no matter what character you choose, and the second the match starts, sugar in my tea three other I ran out of regular come right sugar at you. And it's like Every character has what looks at, at first to be a health bar. Actually, it's kind of the opposite of that. It's called a kill meter. And rather than your bar going go, down as someone result. hurts you, your bar goes up as you hurt other people. Poorly done goof. <laughs> so the more damage you deal out, the more your bar fills up. And once your bar fills up completely, you are granted the ability to kill one of the other players. Has she forgiven you Now yet? at this stage, uh, there are four different basic kills you can do, depending on which button you're pushing. Well, like I said in the video, he did redeem himself by getting me a full copy of you Thrill Kill. You can hit them so hard the they stick to the wall. So. Hit them so hard they explode. 
You can decapitate them with one hit, which is what the computer always likes to do. Or my favorite, which is to hit them so hard that they stick to the ceiling and their blood rains down on you as you celebrate. Personally, I love the concept of the kill here, because it forces you to be a more aggressive fighter. To be honest, I'm normally not that good at fighting games, and I have not played War when of the I do Monsters. play them, I tend to do I'm a lot sure of blocking, of and I'm just a very defensive fighter. But Thrill Kill really puts me on the offense, and it just motivates me to just get out there and, and just kick ass. I mean, this is not the kind of game where, oh, you can just kind of wait around for the timer to run out, and if your bar is higher, That's you'll true. win. No, you absolutely have to kill the other players before they kill you. It's kick ass or die, and horribly. And speaking of which... The game Biofreaks? After you've killed two opponents sure and it's I'm down to you and one. one other fighter, once your kill meter is filled up, you get to do a thrill kill, which is like the basic kills, only a lot more excessive and elaborate. Excuse me. <laughs> and boy, is it ever satisfying. <laughs> you want to talk about gory? Some of these kills are just so over the top. Yeah, well, I'm only using powdered awesome. sugar as a... I mean, I could really go only on using powdered all day sugar because I ran out of regular sugar. It, honestly, it made it taste a little weird, too. So it was, I don't really recommend it. It ever Just hitting her with her own dismembered arms. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Terror Drone, which is basically a fighting game with famous horror movie characters. Yeah, I'm familiar with that one. What was I saying? Oh right, right, right. Belladonna's praying mantis Aaron pose. Kelta, yeah, one of the creators cool. of the game. Was quoted as saying or I that think they you really mean, didn't uh, hold anything back. They put in just about every Belladonna, sadistic that's, little um, thing they could think of, as long as it didn't violet, interfere with I gameplay. Think. You mean the contortionist, right? By the way, the thrill kill that is the most sadistic, in my opinion, is this one coming up. Jesus! Ow. She bends all their Ow. limbs backwards and then breaks their back. <laughs> They just lay there mm, twitching. That's the point I was trying to make. That's awful. Oh yeah. So yeah, the game is violent. Biofreaks is a fighting game that that's is infamous no for being you bad. Much oh. Know that going into it. I wouldn't compare it to Thrill what Kill me then. What caught was how much I Thrill ended Kill up liking awesome. the characters. Basically, here's I have not played Half Life One. I've seen Every a little bit of it. Every single one of these characters has died and gone to hell. A demon called Maruka thinks that it would be cool to have them fight each other in a tournament and. Whoever what wins gets cheesier, to be thrill kill or the Mortal Kombat Each games. I mean, there's been like fucking kind of twisted, at least ten Mortal Kombat games. So I don't know if you can really One lump them all together. One of my favorite characters to use is Violet the Contortionist. And compare them to a single she is game that was so never even off finished. The wall and her Seems like an unfair comparison. Moves are just so crazy to watch. Excuse me. It, it just makes her fun to use. <sighs> and the fact that I can be a little bit cheap with her. Some of these look like hurt. fatalities in Mortal Kombat. But I think my favorite character to use, even more so than Violet is Dr. Faustus. There's just something so unsettling about it. I have sweeteners in my tea. I've doctor. heard they're better something than about all that spoonfuls knowledge of, of sugar. I use a combination of sugar and Truvia But aside normally. from that, he's kind of a comical character. His moves consist of surprisingly graceful martial arts and some Oh yeah, I played a little bit of the first dog -like -like game. Behaviors, where he uses that bear trap on his face to actually bite people. It's just nuts. I think he is arguably the strangest character to ever come out of a fighting game. Now these two are the only characters that I really use consistently, but there are a lot of others that are just so. Oh, cool did I miss the deranged a doctor Tormentor bit that I referenced constantly? Screams a lot, which which makes him kind of uh, intimidating. Probably did. He has this one kill involving chains, which, in my opinion, is a very obvious reference to Hellraiser. <laughs> Belladonna's pretty cool. I've never had much luck using her myself, but she's interesting to watch. She's very, um, athletic with all these crazy martial arts moves she uses. In fact, she kind of reminds me of Catwoman, especially when she's wearing this outfit. Also, Belladonna's image is pretty popular, and she ended up being the poster girl for Thrill Kill. Oddball is a character that I actually kind of felt sorry for the first time I saw him. It didn't seem fair Karen that he's having walks a fight in, sees with the carnage going on, and walks right out. Jeez, what is wrong with you people? Back, depending on which version of him you're looking at. But he more than makes up for it. He's when the computer's using him, he is very aggressive, and he is just all over the place. He also manages to utilize his head and. I'm pretty sure Violet doesn't have a last names. name. 
Yep, you saw that right. This is probably the only game that has an ass rape attack. Or at least the only one ass that is rape anti. attack. Cletus is a redneck cannibal, which basically means he has kind of a Hannibal. These Mortal Kombat 3 look like Nickelodeon All Stars. Kind of <laughs> he has some great martial arts moves for no logical reason at all. That's Maruka is spelled with a U, not two O's. Pills. Personally, I don't care too much about him, but he is kind of a comedy character, and when the computer is using him, he is very, very aggressive. Three more In fact, minutes. I freaking hate fighting against him. He also has some kills that are very weird and kind of funny. And Dino will use the Dr. Faustus clip 78 more times. <laughs> I can't say I'm too big on Mammoth either. As far as I'm concerned, big, powerful characters are, are pretty much a dime a dozen. I, I think the smaller and faster and more agile characters are more interesting. That's just me. But I guess every game has I to have one. I remember you made a sort of zombified Dr. Kane, Faustus type in Resident no, Evil Code that Veronica. Kane. This Kane. Sadist He's an unlockable character who is sort of um anatomizes mid, patients with an aesthetic. Oh yeah, I remember he that guy. Up, I didn't remember know, him looking like Dr. Faustus only got though. Two boss fights to go before the end. <laughs> Jesus. He's another wept. character that I kind of like to use. I don't use him too often because it's a little too easy to be cheap with him. Oh, I did miss it. Oh well. Are so much fun. <laughs> Plus, he's really sadistic. I think the guy named Dog Ball is probably the most sane looking character in the game. He has this one certain attack that just cracks me right up. <laughs> There's another YouTube yes, poop. Yes, he farts fire. Kane from Soul Reaver would not be caught undead doing that. Cast him in. <laughs> it's my Judas first Soul Reaver reference. Of bosses, and he is first of many. Possibly the biggest freak in the game, and that is saying something. His attacks are just insane. You are all weirdos. And he really makes full use of that <laughs> strange anatomy he has. You know, looking at one of the alternate versions of him makes me wonder if maybe the creators of this game were fans of a certain 2D fighter. Nah. Predictably, the final boss is Maruka, since she was the one who arranged this tournament in the first place. She's fun to use, Wish and she could she donate, but you've been broke since starting college. You're unable to use her in That's fine, Alexander, so I understand. You know, I know not everybody can do it. And, and see any sort of final oh, someone just followed me on Twitch. <laughs> which is kind of a shame, because it'd be them. interesting to see what her backstory was. She is still fun to use in the verses and practice modes, though, if only because she is just so damn cool looking. And I'm sure yeah, someone will come along and correct me, but as far as I know, this is the only fighting game I've ever seen where the final Oh, he didn't look like Dr. Faustus, but he's another good example of a medical novel. Is a put very wrong hands. Oh, okay. Reference to Hellraiser. You basically look like you're fighting inside the puzzle box. There is one more character that is unlockable in the final version of the game, anyway. Oh, baby. He's called the Gimp, and you cannot oh, play as him at all. Mainly, he's just a dummy for you to smack around in practice mode. But he has to be seen to be believed. Mm. Oh. Yummy. Yummy. Ryu Ken. Oh, do it to me. Do it to me. More, more. <laughs> that voice is hilarious. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> uh, I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom. Actually, um, can I play a commercial? I feel like I can. Oh, insert ad. Ad inserted. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. Whatever.
looked in the mirror in my... I have a feeling I, all I did was insert the ad into the replay. In any case, um, I noticed my lipstick was all smudged when I look in the bathroom mirror. I hope it hasn't been that way for too long. Have I moved from Twitch to YouTube? Yeah, I'm back on YouTube for now. Um, Twitch just wasn't really working out. <laughs> Bring out the gimp. <laughs> a man who loves his job. <laughs> oh, the advert did play. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, there's like a little symbol that's just a dollar sign, and I, if I hover over it, it says insert ad, so... <laughs> I didn't I didn't really notice it until recently. Thought I would finally give it a shot. <laughs> the ad has been inserted. <laughs> that feels oddly appropriate for this game. I don't like how the title screen is looking at me. Uh, I didn't play Saints Row, so... <laughs> Sounds like any normal cat. I like to think the face is getting me ready to watch some prime 90s metal. <laughs> uh. Not including the normal glitches that naturally come with an unfinished game, there are only a couple things about Thrill Kill that I would complain about. First of all, there's a reason why I haven't talked about the ending FMVs. Oof, yet. the ending FMVs. They really aren't that great. Apparently, Paradox commissioned some random Russian company. And oh, you like the cat title screen? Thank you. It, and it shows. The videos are very short and not very good quality, and they really don't tell you much about the character that you didn't already know going into it. The other thing is that Maruka is insanely cheap and nearly impossible oh God, to beat Maruka. in the almost finished version of the game. And this is in the easier difficulty settings. In the harder ones, the game is Come almost unplayable. Come for me, Tron Cat Mascot. I am a traitor. Now don't get you. me wrong. She's the final <laughs> boss, so of course she's going to be hard. But that's not what I'm complaining about. This just ticks me off because she's that really such a does cool look like the Hellraiser puzzle box. It looked specifically they just took one side of the box and these. duplicated it, but really that's kind of still kills pretty cool. That feeling and makes her seem kind of pathetic. Hell, you know what? This is what it feels like to fight Maruka. <laughs> there, I could have made my point without Disturbed even showing Disturbed album her. named Down with Still, the Kittens. <laughs> I can't help but think even now that it's a shame that this game never came out. And to think that there was a time when Thrill Kill was nearing completion and a lot of people were looking forward to it. It was all over the magazines. They even had a booth at E3 of that year. <laughs> we were so close to getting our Thrill That's Kill. That's pretty cool about the booth at E3. I didn't but then know about the company that until that I been was the game doing out, a search for something Virgin else for this video and that was came bought up. By another company. I won't mention their name. I'll just say that they represent everything that's asinine about the video game industry. Everything asinine. Their take on Thrill Oops. Kill was this. Sorry, kicked my heater. We don't feel that the game's content is appropriate regardless of who publishes it. When you look at Mortal Why Kombat, did the female you look at a fighting game as opposed to a sadistic killing game. Thrill Kill is a killing game. The product did not meet our standards for appropriate content. So not only would they not put the game out themselves, but they refused to sell it to any companies who wanted it. This is what gets me. It's not so much that they cancel the game, Luigi. that happens all the time. It's that they decided to act like the morality police We've been and tried to completely snuff out my videos the lately. That's cool. as if they could protect the world from it. And if that isn't That's bad enough, lewd. they also didn't pay Paradox their final milestone payments, and Paradox had to learn about the game's cancellation through a news posting on IGN.com. Real professional. By the way, as this video is being made, the company in question is trying to buy Take-Two Interactive software. So, yeah. The people who thought that Thrill Kill was too violent and offensive and went out of their way to make sure that nobody ever got to play it are buying the rights to Grand Theft Auto. Try and wrap your brain around that one. <laughs> What's really painful is seeing the game Wu-Tang Shaolin style, the paradox made with the Thrill Kill engine that they were so graciously allowed to keep. Personally, I can't really get into it because it's not my style. I don't know that I'm it looks that much better than Thrill Kill. That is, definitely has a better uh, in some ways, it FMV, looks like a though. more polished Thrill Kill. So maybe if Thrill Kill had been put on the back burner for a year instead of being canceled, the level of quality might have been a little more like this. 
In fact, the game might also have spawned some sequels, and it would have been interesting to see the I don't know, Jesus. <laughs> ...as the technology progressed. So while this game can be found on the internet, and as a side note, while it's not as easy to find as it used to be, you can still find the character designs that were done by Paradox on the internet, along with cover art and images that you can print out and... Since I made this video, I know of at least one person who made a Thrill Kill but website and they put uh, all those images all up there. Ever gonna get. And I think that's kind of sad. For what it is, Thrill Kill is actually a pretty good game, and I really think it could have improved and, and gotten even better if it had a chance. But hey, you know, on the bright side, at least we did get a chance to play it, even if not legitimately. <laughs> so, that about wraps up this episode on Thrill Kill. It's not the best game ever, but it's still a lot of fun, and I really enjoy playing it even now. Just please don't ask me where to get it. Because I want to make sure I end on a happy note, I'm going to leave you with Belladonna's <sighs> I should have done a better job on this. ESRB to totally freak out. Either they stop paying attention to it halfway through, or they really don't have a sense of humor. Yeah, it's hard to see because it's so dark, but she's tickling her foot. See you next time. Now is the time on Game Den Venvidance. <laughs> The devil, <laughs> devil went down to Georgia as a song playing here. Do I miss old YouTube? Well, um, I mean, YouTube is getting worse all the time. So, yeah, I guess I do. I don't know of a specific point in time. If there's a specific point in time that I miss, but... Everything that's asinine about the video game industry says that after GIMP being lewd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, asinine, I get it. <laughs> Knock Take Two were being asses about a game having the name It Takes Two and threatening legal action. I did not know about that. That's fucked. Where do we get it, Tina? Would you believe people still asked me, were still leaving comments asking me that? Even after I specifically said that in a video? And not even the be smart ass like you were. Vitaly's and Thrill Kill should have had the announcer say Thrill Kill. Uh, hi, Kill. <laughs> okay, skipping over the Silent Hill videos because we already watched those. Oh, here's Abadox. Let me unmute this first. There we go. Thrill Kill dance party. <laughs> Macarena sounds like a Mediterranean holiday destination. I miss old YouTube, but hey, I still use it. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? Now, I think just about oh, she all deleted gamers it. have their preferred well, I still agree. <laughs> For me, it's generally Japanese RPGs, survival horror, adventure-type games, preferably horror-themed, but they don't have to be. Various platformers, and I even went through a fighting game phase once upon a time. <laughs> These days, I wouldn't be caught dead playing a space shooter because, well, mostly because I suck at them. And I just don't have the patience to try to get good at games that have a higher difficulty than I can handle. But it wasn't always like that. There was a time when I would like just a about any game a shot. As long I guess as it does it a little bit. Fun, or I would heard good things about it, or I just liked the box art. And I was a lot more patient with games back then. Oh yeah, this song is on my, on my uh, Abadox playlist <laughs> I that I play whenever I do, whenever I stream Abadox one, art. If it was in a genre that I wasn't good at. And this is why I can call Abadox So was this a ripoff still NES gaining? Games. No, it was a spin-off. <laughs> the thing about Abadox is that I really don't remember how I discovered it. I had no Sounds like a medicine, yeah, it kind of does. I only had TV commercials, do you know what it apparently is? It's the word Abaddon just kind of altered a little bit to sound cool. It could that's, be that that's my mom got it for from. me, figuring I'd like it, I didn't, uh, or maybe it was until advertised it on, on TV and I asked for it. Uh, it's kind of funny, there's one of my favorite Yes, there is a TV Tropes page for Abadox, believe it or not. There you go. Okay, before I go any further, I gotta be honest about something. Remember when you asked people not to bug you well, about I was the Promised Land when doing Star Trek Red Dwarf? I the first comment suck at when you do now. the Promised so, Land, yeah. To get all the footage I wanted to get, I had to use an invincibility code. Thrill okay? Kill 2, now even more killing. If killy. it bothers you, <laughs> deal with it. And thrilly. 
I wish there was a competitive for YouTube, then the platform would have Here's to the story in and look a after its YouTubers more. Your home yeah, exactly. And any time a website tries, it always fails. Swallowed by a massive planet-eating monster called Parasitus. I have not really yeah, seen Phantasmophobia. Yeah, kind of like Unicron, but not robotic. Since you're probably the only survivor, your job, lucky you, is to go inside Parasitus and oh, you meant to say, is save it weird the to use YouTube princess. If you okay, it's lame. It. But I mean, this isn't there isn't really an alternative, so yeah. Anyway. I wouldn't say it's that weird. You start off on the outside of Parasitus as you make your way to the mouth. This is easily the least interesting level of the game. The enemies are clearly meant to seem horrific, but really they're just <laughs> kind of silly because they don't make any kind of sense. I was reminded flying when I saw eyeballs, the Sonic and Knuckles clip, I finally got skulls, all the Chaos Emeralds in Sonic Mania. Oh, nice. Chomping teeth. And what's with the purple pterodactyls? They just look kind of out of place among all that other stuff. <laughs> the purple but it's the pterodactyls. Boss of this I ended area up doing really some art sets the for stage those, for the rest even though I didn't think I was going to use them Whoa, in, my, what the fuck? in my Abadox game idea. Now, this skinless horror puts all oh, those love dogs in survival FPS. horror games to shame. <laughs> faces. This thing is enough to send the tyrant and pyramid head <laughs> and nemesis screaming into the desert. This is one of the few bosses in this game to actually have a name. For some reason, it's called Bao. B A U. Personally, I think the simplicity is kind of neat, and as silly as it sounds with being the first boss, I think it's actually one of my favorites in the game. I don't know, I just think he seems so cool. Bao is awesome. But sadly, he is evil and must be destroyed. Bye bye, Bao. Bao is a bad doggo. Now we're in the mouth, and I'm gonna have to stop here for a minute because for those of you who play a lot of space shooters, this part of the game is gonna look very familiar. I mean, Sonic and Mania got too hard for me to and I stopped playing it a while I had back, so before, <laughs> you're, you're definitely doing better than me. There was a certain arcade game I played a lot when I was a it's kid. Like Doom Guy at a convenience a store down the street from balls. my house. And yeah, this is the same oh, one well. where I used to play Golden Axe. But this was long before that. The game was Life Force. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it, if only because it's a spin-off <laughs> Star Trek, the animated series in Giant Spock episode. I never got very far in it because, I forgot about like I that. said, I suck at shooters. But man, this game Zombie is so cow. pretty. The graphics and music. Like Abadox, I liked playing it just for the experience of seeing and listening to it. Oh, it was a thing of beauty. <laughs> I really did think that now, game was Now, I know I said that I don't remember why I bought Abadox, but I do it's know like that it was not because and, I had heard yeah. it was a similar game to Life Force. It was sheer coincidence. I just got up to a certain point in Abadox and went, wait a minute. <laughs> I had friends who used to make fun of Abadox and call it Life Force 2. But really, it's only the first level, along with the occasional <laughs> enemy throughout. There was no Life Force 2 at the time, but now there is. Where Abadox has a storyline involving being inside a giant creature, Life Force that was mainly just a series of cool-looking <laughs> but random locations. Now, some versions of Life Force are Kujo, a bit more like I'm Abadox, pretty sure Bao is like at least whole, twice as big. You know, internal theme. Bao looks like he's about that as big as a later version, so. and... Uh, you know what? If I was going to talk about Life Force slash Salamander and all its variations, it would take a whole episode. Yeah, I am. Anyway, advertising this a thing boss I never is did. Death Face. Never got around to okay, actually. Okay, I know doing... I said Bao was the only one with a name, but the Bao rest just of the names are more like he would be a bad skinless like doggo. <laughs> anyway, could while be. it behaves like and is reminiscent of the first boss in Life Force, it looks a bit more like a bug yeah, eye. Yeah, I sucked at Life Force, but I did think it looked really cool. Face. Now we're I keep in forgetting the there's a game called Life Force. I was immediately if you're thinking blind of that and haven't movie. noticed by now. <laughs> yeah, they're not game related is either. Super gory. You don't get to see 8-bit gore very often, so it's pretty cool if you're into that kind of thing. Okay, Hershey, Fine. thanks for stopping by. This is pretty unusual for a Nintendo game. These are the same people who censored Mortal Kombat on the Super Nintendo. Hmm. I guess here they can get away with it because there's no violence against humans, only monsters, and no actual blood. Just. Lots and lots of viscera. Oh, thanks for the donation, George. The and message is eyeballs. this. The message is there I mean, is no message. You're just about <laughs> up to deep. your uh, eyeballs in. Um, yeah. <laughs> the enemies are kind of neat in this area. You have green pods that shoot projectiles and these other things that look like demonic sperm, I guess. You also have, according to the instruction book, the hands of death and lizards of doom. Let us rain some doom, <laughs> doom down upon the filthy doom. heads of our doomed, our doomed enemies. enemies. I'm gonna sing the doom song now. Doom, 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 that went on a little doom, longer doom, than it doom, should have. Doom, 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 
I'm surprised I didn't get tagged for that. Or maybe I did. Who knows? Now, the boss at the end of this area is. I guess we'll find so out if this. Uh, up. This in gets the middle dinged bottom, after we I have this weird pod thing with a mouth that opens up in there. Yes, this what is a else, Nintendo but game. A big eyeball inside. NES okay, that's pretty nasty. But that's not the worst of it. Oh no. Now, let's look at these blue fleshy things that shoot projectiles. I don't okay, know what's to complain gross, about eyeballs. No <laughs> Wait a minute. What's going on with this one in the lower left corner? That's a head! <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but whatever it is, it is so wrong. <laughs> Let's put this thing out of its misery. Something coming out of his now mouth, we're in or some kind of nerve center. And either way, it's not pleasant to think about. Forget where you really are about. for a minute. It's quite pretty. Nintendo eyeball system. It kind of looks like a blue underwater forest with dancing flowers and fish. Like she was offended by the and hands a boss of death that looks like a shark. <laughs> even the music is nice, and even kind of bouncy and happy sounding, all things considered. Really, just about all the music in this game is good. I'm not saying it's the best out there, but it suits the game well, Gygus. and I like it a lot. And it sounds familiar. In I'm fact, sure I'd also it, love but... to see more of those of you who are musically inclined do covers of some of these Oh, tunes. Earthbound, okay. I wanted to use some for this review, but I could barely find anything online. You know, for a game that's sort of horror-themed, some of these levels are really colorful. Personally, I love it. There's just not enough color in video games anymore. Sounds weird coming from a Everything is all band. gray and brown. I'll take pretty colors over that any day. <laughs> Do I even really Pingus. need to say anything about this crazy <sighs> ass boss? It's cool, Nothing I wrong guess. Just spitting okay, at you through it's a half really melted, cool, but cheesy, totally nonsensical. Cheesy <laughs> then again, that could apply to pretty much the whole game, couldn't it? And that's why I love it. We are now in the stomach, and how we got there from the nerve center, I'll never know. Yeah, don't even try to figure out the anatomy of this creature. It makes no freaking sense. This video almost feels like a let's play at times. I just kind of describe now, what's on the screen. aside from the music, the sound effects are pretty good too. <sighs> you hear a nice wet pop when you destroy most of the enemies. Pretty nasty, but they could have taken them even further if they wanted. A little more variety would have been nice rather than hearing the same sound over and over. For other enemies, it just sounds like a random explosion. Again, not the best, but it works. Yeah, pretty much all the mid-level bosses in this game are pretty cool, but not that big a deal. Except Bao, he's a freaking badass. <laughs> okay, time for more of the same, I guess. Oh, oh part two just kind of. Why do part I one hear just nothing ends but abruptly a giant and then part two starts? Oh god. <laughs> oh god. It is the dreaded Cilia monster. Oh, you know what? This is the last video. This is the freakiest enemy in any game ever. Holy crap. Is that thing ever big? Yep, the next one is I have no mouth and I must scream. We already in this case, that, there's so. only one sound worse than that heartbeat. <laughs> the boss music! <laughs> the creature is an intestinal brain. <laughs> For some reason, like I can NES accept just about everything about this monster, but the eye lasers just cross the line into absurdity somehow. Are you talking about a game called Microcosm? Now this is where the game gets decidedly less cool in my opinion. The instruction manual refers to this level as the intestinal channel, Oh, that channel, game. Okay, yeah. It makes a somewhat jarring transition yeah, microcosm from the does look a little bit like a to what 3D looks kind of like a space station. What the hell game am I playing now? I mean, it makes sense that if this creature swallowed a lot of mechanical stuff that you'd be seeing a lot of it at some point. And don't get me wrong, Sexy. it's still nice <laughs> graphics and it looks cool, but the crab with an eye for an arse. They kind of take it too far and basically <laughs> took out what made this game unique to begin with. <laughs> My zit screamed in horror when you said that. The are all robots. <laughs> the second one doesn't even look all that interesting. Uh, it doesn't move much. That's about it. By the way, this one boss fight that consists of three robots. This is as far as I ever got when I was a kid. I can't believe I ever got that far without any cheat codes. Sway. I got this far just out of pure tenacity. Good times. Zoom down the tube of death. I gotta sing the doom song now! Aside from the change in scenery, the game has another fault. I know you can't tell because of the invincibility code, but it is very, very hard. Oh, it's the guy One who sent me the Japan you. box. 
There are little projectiles <laughs> That's awesome. everywhere. You can't touch the walls. Glad you're still around, Toro. There are some Toro. corridors that are very, you're going very by a different tight. name now. <laughs> you do get power-ups, but as soon as you die, you lose them, and you start right back at the beginning of the level. Now, I'm not saying that difficulty is a bad thing. It's just that this level of difficulty just isn't what I like in a game anymore. Just be warned that this game is brutal. Mm -hmm. And now we meet the final boss. I wouldn't say that it's the scariest boss in the game. The Cilium Monster definitely wins Pretty that Pretty cool prize. boss. But it's probably the most unique and detailed. It kind of looks like the love child of Audrey 2 and... A scorpion? Well, at least the developers finally got tired of eyeballs. <laughs> and for some reason it's shooting ghosts at me. Hmm, does that mean that Parasitus' former victims haunt its oh, insides? Oh yeah, Shark Guardian. Okay, I don't want to think about that, it's just too weird. I don't think I was paying attention when he showed up. Well, another person just followed me on Twitch. Once you what destroy the, the boss, you get to rescue Princess Maria. I hate bowling. Yeah, not that Maria, <laughs> thank God. Maria. Who is I now, hate for some reason, really small and inside a sphere. Whatever. You probably thought that beating the final boss meant the end of the so game, right? So we went through right? the intestines, we're heading for the Wrong. boss. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the monster you craps about You get to go ridiculously <laughs> fast and try to dodge all these structures. I told you this game was brutal. And here's one more thing to think about. You go in through the mouth, we go. then through the body. Where do you think you're gonna come out? The butt! <sighs> yeah. <laughs> the butt. Okay, as much as I love this game, I have to admit that it suffers from bad box artitis. Okay, it doesn't bad compare with Mega Man. <laughs> But I do get the impression that at least this artist has drawn a <laughs> Those human cliche being Halloween decor. <laughs> okay, ghost. Yeah, they should have just called it Boo Haunted bad. House. Just cheesy and inaccurate. I can't believe this is supposed to be Death Face. He looks like a big slug with teeth. Okay, Alexander, thanks for stopping is by. Is that a flying a good saucer? Night too. And what's up with the main character? Shouldn't he be in some kind of mecha suit? I don't think that a couple yards of colorful spandex and a helmet are going to give you much protection. <laughs> Not to mention that he just looks like something out of a low-budget sci-fi movie from the 70s. Well, at least they got the title right. No, seriously, it looks awesome. Better than the title screen in the game, even. Oh, and look who put out this game in America. Milton Bradley. Yeah, the company that put out Connect 4 and Hungry Hungry Hippos also put out one of the goriest <laughs> NES games ever made. I freaking love Hungry, it. hungry eyeball monsters. <laughs> Despite some of my complaints about Abadox, I think that some of the visuals are so cool. These parasitists doesn't shoot its spawn at you like It'd a certain giant seahorse, well I know. It'd translate to, say, a modern 3D mm, shooter. Poop shoot. Yeah, I would love to see an attempt at a remake of this game. There is a Battletoads so level that looks a lot like to Abadox one. to me. Well, not really. I'm not a programmer, and I don't even know any 3D programmers, so about all I could do is play around with character and monster designs. Here, I'm talking about my possible game that maybe I'll still animation. make someday. I don't expect it to ever be finished since I haven't touched it in years, not to mention I'm just too busy these days. But at least it was a good excuse to pad my portfolio and learn some new things about using 3D Studio Max. I did a lot of these little test renders Sebastian just to kind of get a feel for gory. what some of the <laughs> creatures in the game would look like. Here's a test render I did of a simple nerf Got my new design for a uh, It's not much Death to look at so structure-wise, but I mainly made it to play around with volumetric fog, which I had never really done before. I think the artists back then were the ones I worked on the most of the main character. A short deadline. Oh, I know. Mega design, actually. I wasn't I wasn't monster. meaning to necessarily blame the artists. And I know these the are kind of low just, you know, I did these the just before the bad. latest <laughs> generation of systems came out, and I guess I was playing it a bit safe with a polygon count. These two videos coming up are actually about the most complete I've ever made. Usually I just model a character or two and never get beyond that. This first one was my first attempt at doing lip sync. The voice and sound effects are going to sound very familiar if you're a fan oh, of Transformers. Oh yeah, this bit. Okay, let's straighten up this mess. This armament, acid pellet style. The second is a simulation of what the Cilia monster Oops, level sorry. might look like. It's shorter than the original, and it's very unfinished, but hopefully you can see where I was going with it. At least they gave us some gems to chuckle at, yeah. <laughs> I 
Twitter actually be posting your 3D Nerf Center on Twitter ago. a few months back All shortly left is before the concept you did art that. And That's fine, though. The Most stream. of this stuff would have to be redone oh, if I yeah. to get serious That's right, anyway. I did post that on Twitter, didn't I? Well, thanks, As Julia. for what the game would be like, I think giving the main character a flashlight a la Silent Hill would be interesting. And it would make sense, since the inside of a monster wouldn't exactly be brightly lit. And since I'm not big on first-person shooters, I'd go with a more survival horror look. Basically, the way I imagine this game looking on the current generation of systems would involve enemies and areas that resemble those from Abadox in an engine that's very similar to Silent Hill Homecoming. That would kick ass. So kind of like Dead Space, which came out sometime after I made this video, I think. Well, that about sums up this episode Or maybe it came Abadox. out before and I didn't have a chance to play If you're a fan of space shooters, you could probably think of better ones to play, but <laughs> ew, cool, at least but this ew. one is pretty unique <laughs> as far as the general look of it. And if you're into horror games, blood and guts and all that good stuff, this is a pretty good place to get your fix. <laughs> well, that's it for now. See you next time. Oh, another copywritten song coming up. It's Heart of Rock and Roll by Huey Lewis in the News. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was the Sestrin music from Panzer Dragoon Saga. <laughs> I love that music. It's so, like, eerie. Yeah, that wasn't the final boss, though. That was the Cilia monster, but yeah. I think an HP Lovecraft was what you were going for. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm not really that familiar with HP Lovecraft, so... I wasn't intentionally going for that. Well, <laughs> not watching the Silent Hill videos again. Let's see if there's some random... I put some random shit in here. Let's see if there's anything else we can watch. Oh, there's the... There's a blooper reel. I guess we can watch whatever's left on this uh, list. Oh, hi, Ricardo. Good evening to you, too. <laughs> Eldritch Abomination, that explains all the eyes. <laughs> oh, thanks, George. I already forgot what video I clicked on. What is this? Oh, I didn't, I didn't actually click on anything yet. Oh yeah, the trailers for my Silent Hill games aren't very interesting. Oh yeah, the looper reel, that's what I meant to click on. Okay, still gaming pictures, take three. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Lahara laughing. Yep. <laughs> Let me fix my damn hair because I've been running around and grabbing cartridges. Yeah, these are this is for the pictures I took for well I filmed myself. For the Silent Hill video I did for Still Gaming, and then I just took stills from it. That's enough of that. Silent Hill One. Oh, that's right. I was I was actually planning on covering all the Silent Hill games. Silent Hill Two. I was gonna use this set of pictures for all of them. <laughs> I'll never understand why they put what's her name on the cover. I don't even remember her name now. I know it's not Mary on the cover, which you'd think it would be, but. I liked fighting Sester, and it it was always nerve-wracking waiting for the small dragon to emerge from him so you could combo it. Oh, yeah. Hi, Flash. Last but not least. Well, kind of least, but... Silent Hill 4. The Room. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm done. I That's I'm how old this video anything. is. We'll call it done. <laughs> laundry room bloopers, signing off. What the hell? If I locked myself in the laundry rooms, that was the only place that was dark enough. Golden axe, facial expressions, take two. Let's see if Lee will be quiet enough this time and not piss me off again. <laughs> That's right, I think Lee was making a lot of noise when I did the first one. What's going on with the framing there? Did it look like that in the final video? And the camera's off. Yay. 
Oh, okay. My lighting has gotten better. <laughs> we were all old once. <laughs> okay, that looks still bad framing, but at least that looks more like I remember it in the final video. Hi, Mr. Roboto. Here's the real kill. I'm not gonna deal with clamp lights, damn it. <laughs> no! I like doing this by myself. Dean all up in my screen. Lee is my husband. Hi, Justine. Lots of people showing up all of a sudden. <laughs> I ended up We're using that in the Thrill Kill video. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm going to use it for. When you said the room, it made me think of a certain movie of the same name. Yeah, hence why I made that joke in that in that video. When I covered it on the game den. <clears throat> this is what I used to do. I would film myself making all these expressions, and then I would take the frames from that and use them as stills. It was, it was a stupid amount of work. Which is why. Go away. Which is why I eventually stopped doing it. It's gonna take forever. Yes, I am married. Been married for quite a while, actually. <laughs> Loved my Silent Hill videos and my overall approach. Thank you. You two are so cute together. <laughs> Whoops, um, skip this one because I used, skip this one because I used, uh, Stray Cat Strut. I don't know if I used it enough for it to get tagged, but and these are the little trailers I did. Uh, some of them are, I actually had some fun with. Did I have fun with the Silent Hill 2 one? I might have. Let's see. <laughs> I got a letter. <laughs> the name on the envelope said the game den. My show's name. It's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> the last game den episode was nine months ago. The game den. Could you really be on debase to this dot org? <laughs> oh, I forgot I was on debaser's website when I did this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, I'm about to really embarrass myself with the Silent Hill 3 trailer. Imagine if Silent Hill 4 also had a character named Mark. <laughs> I know, that would have made it even worse. What are my favorite game dens? Um, God, Echo the Dolphin, I had a lot of fun with that one. Um, mm, God, it's hard to pick one. <laughs> Lee was the guy Douglas couldn't find. <laughs> what would this do to see in Silent Hill? I don't know. The cats are both of our cats. <clears throat> the cats are both of our cats? Yeah, I guess that technically makes sense. That was a weird way to word that. Maria trying to seduce James and James be like, the candles, the music, the sexy dress, what's going on here? Uh, I should do more openings like that. I'll keep that in mind. Hype backlash hit me hard when I first played Silent Hill 2. Mm. I also got a letter. It was ridiculous. It couldn't possibly be true. There's no way I owed that much in my electric bill. <laughs> okay, here's one where I really embarrass myself. Uh, 
Oh, thank you for the donation, Brooke. No. Oh. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being amazing, she says. I too got a letter that was H. <laughs> Shit, I hope I don't get dinged for this. Good lord, my singing it is would terrible. Be a much better sight with you, with me. I was trying to, that's the worst part. This is one of those cases where I'm trying to be funny. Oh my god. Rumors are that Sony might have taken over the Silent Hill franchise and there might be a new game in development without Konami's involvement. This is the first time hearing about it. I'll 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 see it, I'll believe it when I see it, I guess. Now that you're gone, my supply. Foretold by Gyromancy. <laughs> Test came back positive. <laughs> uh, I was hoping the chair would spin like that. I was glad that it came out the way it did. I think I had, yeah, I had Skitch do the music. <clears throat> My singing is not wonderful. Shut up. <laughs> oh, Lee keeps leaving hearts. Just think of it as karaoke. Yeah, it's exactly how it was. Uh, I could be on America's Got Talent. Yeah, I could maybe be on the first episode and then get kicked off. <laughs> Nailed the chair swivel, yeah. The ending of it is funny, at least. <laughs> Imagine if Dina went to Silent Hill and she met Boxhead. I bet Boxhead's weapon is FDAU. <laughs> Nearly takes out all of Dina's health and she used a bunch of ampules. <laughs> wow. I'm not sure how to react to that. Oh shit, I'm being filmed. Run away. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea. Sesame Street and Silent Hill. Uh, Dina should release an album. Nah. Uh, fan theories we already watched. There's this little thing. I don't know. This is probably a little vlog video or something, but what the hell? Dina here. Sorry about the faceless vlog, but this just kind of snuck up on me and I just wanted to put something out there today. So uh, I randomly got. I just noticed a your name is Justine Case. I get that. I get the joke now. I'm dumb. Last <laughs> night, like 10 p.m. So it was probably, you know, after Dina midnight sings for all the person who made the, uh, who made the comment um, saying that, hey, this video is exactly 10 years old, and I thought about it, and I went, well, shit, that's my first Game Den episode, so that means that it's the 10-year anniversary for the Game Den. That's kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I had no idea that that date was coming. <laughs> I don't really pay attention to stuff like that, but, uh, so, uh, enjoy the Game Den footage. <laughs> yeah, I have been doing the Game Den for 10 years. Um, I started doing Everything's it basically been crossed because, over Silent Hill at some point, well, yeah. I... The first videos Including I did my little were, pony. <laughs> um, for my husband's show, Still Gaming, I was doing quote-unquote guest reviews Excuse me. of some games. And uh, at some point, I just... He intended for no, I'm not a smoker. series I just have, to have uh, short videos, issues and I my... wanted to do more long-form stuff. And um, I just eventually decided to throat. start my own show where I can do longer, more detailed videos. And that's how the Game Den was born. And my very first idea was, hey, I want to talk about... Golden Axe, the arcade version, and I'll like compare it to the Genesis version, and it's gonna be this long, detailed video, and it's gonna be awesome. Actually, if you guys don't mind too much, I wanna back this up and uh, I wanna actually listen to what I'm saying here, because I, I was kind of talking about the history of the game den. I'm not gonna go all the way back, just a little bit. Oh, cool, another bot. Uh, I guess I must be doing well if, if, if I'm attracting bots. Don't think I didn't see you name the Sega logo style there. <gasps> <laughs> the 
that eagle and golden axe looks like he's thinking people are walking on me why <laughs> okay mr roboto thanks for stopping by so uh enjoy the game den footage <laughs> yeah i have been doing the game den for 10 years um i started doing it basically because well i the first videos i did were um for my husband's show, Still Gaming, I was doing quote unquote guest reviews oh, here we go. I'm of some about games. Still and gaming. Uh, at some point, I just, he intended for his series to have short videos, and I wanted to do more long form stuff. And um, I just eventually decided to start my own show where I can do longer, more detailed videos, and that's how the Game Den was born. And my very first idea was hey, I want to talk about. Golden Axe, the arcade version, and I'll like compare it to the Genesis version, and it's gonna be this long, detailed video, and it's gonna be awesome. Uh, <laughs> being that that video is like 10 years old, it's actually a little bit hard for me to watch now. But you know, <laughs> it was my very first video, and I was just throwing stuff to the wall to see what stuck. So yeah, like I said, this date kind of snuck up on me, and this is me just trying to put out something to commemorate it, I guess. And um, unfortunately, I don't have anything special planned for you guys. Uh, I do have some good news, though. I know it's been a long time since I've done a game den. Um, the main reason I I I didn't really like wonder if that giant eagle and golden axe is meant to them. be a rock. I just Could kind be. of sort of inadvertently phased them out in favor of <laughs> film dens because those are so much quicker and more easy to do. You, you just have like two hours of footage already, and then you just figure out what to do with that footage rather than having to capture footage and record yourself playing the game and sometimes you end up with like you know 50 hours of footage which you have to root through and obviously a discussion about a video game is going to be less linear than a discussion about a movie so basically game uh, film dens are a lot more quick and easy to do and since i'm trying to put out big videos more often um i kind of you know haven't been doing game dens so much um but I actually am working on one. In fact, not only am I working on I one, I'm my working on there. one I didn't that's edit it out. in that's the same unusual. vein of Golden Axe and Abadox. It's, it's, uh, I don't want to say what it's going to be, of course, because I never do. But uh, it's an older game. This As isn't like out, a Silent Echo Hill the style of Game Den. This is, you know, this is a more retro one. It's more... Yeah, it was actually kind of interesting timing. I had been working on the first Game Den I had done in a while which was Echo, and then I, then the my the 10th year anniversary of the game den just kind of snuck up on me while I was working on it. About it kind of how much fun the game is and how awesome it is, and it's not so much in-depth. I know a lot of people immediately think of Silent Hill when they think of the game den, and I get it. It's because most of my game den videos ended up being about Silent Hill games, but yeah. uh, I hope you guys will like a more simple and straightforward game den. Um, I don't know when that's coming out. I guess if I knew that this... Uh, we were coming up on the 10-year anniversary of the Game Den. I might have planned it for yesterday, but I didn't know that was coming. So um, at this rate, I have the script mostly finished, so I don't know when it's going to come out. It might be um, like late March. Late March or early April seems reasonable. <laughs> I think it'll probably come out around that time. I guess that's about all I have to say. Like I said, I just wanted to put something out there today to kind of commemorate the 10 years. Let me see. I said late March or early April. When did that video come out? April 26th. Well, <laughs> late April, close enough. <clears throat> Your anniversary of the game, Dan. Um, I can't promise that I'm going to do a lot more in the future, but I am going to try to do at least maybe one per year or something. Oh, that sure didn't work um, out. <laughs> I'm going to try not to go like two years without doing one again. Mm. Um, technically, I did one last year, but it wasn't really a proper game den. It's been a couple years since I did a proper one, I think. No, so, it's been three yeah. years since I did a game den. So yeah, Oops. thanks to everyone who's stuck with me all this time. And if you're new... Feel free to go back and watch the old videos. Just keep in mind that a lot of them are very old and my style has changed a lot since then. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Yay, patrons. I'm still using... Well, I had the new cat model by then, but I was still using the old background with it. I hadn't, I hadn't gotten around to animating it yet. I just rendered an image of it sitting down and I used it in place of the old cat model. Foggy day sweeping the blood away on my way to where my nightmares meet. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Silent Hill? <laughs> Golden Axe was Abadox this whole time? What? Actually, where the hell did that phrase come from? Which phrase?
when we were talking about the dragons or wyverns, I thought about Dina kicking their asses while the theme song of Dragon Tales is playing while she's killing them. <laughs> Looking forward to my debut album produced by Yamoka. <laughs> Good lord, I would need so many singing lessons if I were ever going to do that. If you end up in Silent Hill, don't forget to bring a portable toaster, the most powerful weapon. <laughs> Yeah, I'll hide it in my big puffy jacket. <laughs> better late than never. Uh, the toaster <laughs> is better than the chainsaw. Three years, wow, time flew, yep. Where does the time go, indeed? <clears throat> it's been two years since you discovered the channel. Yeah, I guess that sounds about right. Hmm... Yeah, for a vlog video, that was actually kind of interesting, hearing myself talk about the history of the game den and all that. There wasn't any kind of stinger, was there? Nah, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> look at the title card for Golden Axe. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, the my ears are burning. Where did that phrase come from? Good question. I know I've heard it in a lot of places. And in Japan, they say if you sneeze, it's because somebody's talking about you. But here we seem to say your ears are burning. <clears throat> but I don't know where it comes from. In our restless dreams, we see that show, The Game Den. You promised you'd take us there again someday. Well, we're alone there now waiting for you. <laughs> uh. Auto-tune hills. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely need some auto-tuning. The Hellraiser debtor title card looks like Pinhead pondering his life choices. It does. <laughs> oh boy, it's kind of appropriate too. Whoops, damn it, I keep kicking this stupid heater. Fortunately, it's not on. <laughs> yeah, that face would be work better. That face would have worked even better for Hellworld. I didn't think Hellraiser debtor was that bad, but definitely didn't feel like a Hellraiser movie. I would Google its origins, but I'm lazy. What does Akira Yamoka work on nowadays? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's wondering about it, but nobody wants to Google it. <laughs> Foxhead is waiting too. Don't worry, he's been tamed and housebroken. <laughs> Pinhead needs a hug. He does look like he needs a hug there. Pinhead looks like he just got a dear John. <laughs> Why the hell did I agree to appear in all these damn direct-to-video sequels, Pinhead? <laughs> uh. I'm looking up the ears are burning thing. Ears are burning definition and meaning. Oh. Oh, thank you, Mad Morpheus. Hi, Dina. Just want to toss a little something your way. Have a nice evening. Thank you. You too. I'm looking it up on Webster right now. Ears are burning idiom. Uh, definite, uh... Humorous used to say that someone has a feeling that other people are talking about him or her. They don't tell where it came from. The idiom comes from the belief that a person's ears burn whenever others are discussing him or her. Yeah, I gathered that. <laughs> this belief dates back. All the way back to ancient Rome. Romans believed that if the right ear was burning, people were giving the person praise. Well, there you go. <laughs> Dates back to ancient Rome, apparently. D 
Una's channel icon on the right looks like she's pissed or somewhat disappointed in the pinhead to fuck face makes it two times better. <laughs> I'm over here like, I'm not mad, pinhead. I'm just disappointed. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, flash copy paste it while I was reading it, apparently. That's interesting. His last work was the medium. He's also apparently working on Slitterhead. Pinhead would be a sewing circle's best friend. <laughs> hmm. Her pissed look came from Hell World. That is true. That actually did come from Hell World, the Hell World video. Shitter head. <laughs> well, it is an odd title. I always thought that if my ears were burning, it meant that I'd stupidly set my ears on fire. <laughs> all roads lead to Rome, after all. Dates back to Silent Hill. If your right ear sets on fire, it means people are praising you. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Slitterhead is Kaicho, Kaichiro Toyama from Silent Hill, the Silent Hill 1 director's next game. Okay. <laughs> Pinhead, oh. <laughs> what is Hellraiser like? Well, that's a loaded question. Well, you should watch my film den on it. <laughs> watch my film den videos on it. I always try not to get too spoilery in part one, so if you get to the end of the first video and you're finding the movie interesting, then you can watch it before watching part two, and you won't be too terribly spoiled, usually. Oh, it was shown at the Game Awards the other night. I didn't watch that. The only thing I, the only thing I was really looking forward to seeing was the trailer for Sonic 2, and of course that went up on Twitter. That went up on Twitter as soon as it uh, went live, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> Slitterhead is a really weird name, though. I feel like they should give it a better name. I don't know. <laughs> First two Hellraiser movies are good, the rest are a mixed bag. Yeah, basically. Some people think Hellraiser 3 is also good. I think Hellraiser 3 isn't very good, though it has some great moments in it. Um, a lot of people don't like uh, the fourth one. I think the fourth one is pretty good. It's just a little... It's just a little weird. Because it was one of those movies that they did last-minute edits on and reshoots and all that. After that, the first two direct-to-DVD, or the first direct-to-video, the first two direct-to-video movies were pretty good. And then came Deader, which was okay, but kind of weird, and it didn't really feel like a Hellraiser movie. And then it just it really goes downhill after that. <clears throat> Though I have, not seen, uh, I have not seen Judgment yet still, so... Hellraiser is about the misadventures of Pinhead Larry. <laughs> That's funny because there is a character named Larry in Pinhead. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> yes, I saw the Sonic Hill move. Sonic, Sonic Hill. <laughs> I saw the Sonic movie 2 trailer. Yeah, it looks awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, no news about Final Fantasy VII Remake. I should have known when nobody mentioned it on Twitter or anything. That's a bummer. Hellworld is definitely trash. I think Hellworld is the worst. Most people would say Revelations is worse, but I think Hellworld is worse than Revelations, but... Idris Elba proved he was the best choice for Knuckles. In fact, he's... 
practically dethroned Dan Green at the best voice for the Echidna to me. Wow. <clears throat> no, I did not watch Cannibal Holocaust. That is not the sort of movie I like to watch. <laughs> Pinhead's like Nigel. He's lovely, but he tends to get a bit narky if you get too close to him with a magnet. Uh, Hellworld sucked, but Revelations pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was kind of cool that it was gory. Hellraiser movies were starting to go pretty easy on the gore for a while, until that one. I'm a little afraid to watch Judgment, because I know there's a scene where someone gets force-fed someone else's vomit, so I'm really not looking forward to that one. I have heard from some people that it's actually pretty good overall, but I don't know. I've heard from other people that it's worse, so it's possibly even worse than Revelations, but I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Special Iron has seen the Sonic 2 trailer a few times. <laughs> By two, he means a hundred. <laughs> when I was a kid, I thought Pinhead was a vengeful voodoo doll, not knowing his backstory. <laughs> Uh, figured he got mad at his creators always putting pins in his head and got butt hurt. <laughs> That'd be one way to do it. <laughs> Sonic Hill is the crossover I didn't know I needed. <laughs> uh, I'll bet somebody, that, that's gotta be fan fiction somewhere. Someone has written Sonic Hill. <laughs> Green Zone got jacked. <laughs> I got a letter. The name on the letter said Amy. I can't do Sonic. <laughs> that was me imitating, like, Aaron from Game Grumps doing Sonic. Sonic Hill sounds like an unusual game. You run through fast-paced levels, but you have to be extra careful because they're all shrouded in fog. Okay, somebody needs to make that game now. Somebody make the fan game Silent Sonic Hill. Pyramid Head with her big red mustache. Sonic fans are accusing Idris Elba of lying. He said he wouldn't make Knuckles sound sexy, but he did. <laughs> well, it could be that he didn't intend to, and it just came out that way. I'm probably going to wrap up soon, but I really have to go to the bathroom, so I'll be right back, and I'm going to play another ad while I'm gone. So bear with me here. I'll be right back.
Sorry, I had to stop and give Tara some pets. <clears throat> at least Revelations didn't have Pinhead say, how's that for a wake-up call? Yeah, exactly. Like, at least Pinhead's dialogue was better. I'm curious about Judgment, but never got, but it never got released here. Ah. By many accounts, it improves over the last two. I've heard that, yeah. I thought it was a pretty good impression of Sonic. <laughs> I've never even really tried before. He made Knuckles' voice way too deep. I mean, Knuckles' voice has always been kind of deep and growly. I just maybe think he pushed it a little farther than the guy who usually voices him. <coughs> <clears throat> why Idris Elba? Why not? Because <laughs> they always cast celebrities to do voice roles, unfortunately. So at least in this case, they picked a good one. That voice was pleasantly shocking. <laughs> he could read a dictionary and make it sound sexy. <laughs> that sounds about right. <clears throat> I love how Sonic 2 is using the plot element of Robotnik lying to Knuckles about Sonic. Yeah, that's pretty much the best way to introduce Knuckles. Those darn ads for obscure games you've never heard of and all the likelihood we'll never play. Uh-oh, now I'm worried what they advertised. I hope it wasn't like Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> <clears throat> Idris Elba proved on Hot Ones that you can sound sexy while scorching your tongue and throat to, with death sauces. Sonic Adventures was already kind of a bleak and depressive experience in its own way. Already found Sonic X Silent Hill picks. <clears throat> Yeah, that was cool how he was blocking Sonic's spin attack using just his hand. <laughs> Agent Stone was happy that Robotnik was back. <laughs> yeah. That guy, I don't know. I don't know what his deal is with Robotnik. <clears throat> Terra should always get pets, indeed. <laughs> Agent Stone's man crush on Robotnik. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bit of a simp, isn't he? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't have any water, so I'm going to attempt to use... I think this is too empty, though. Yeah, too empty. I'm not going to take the cap off and drink it. <laughs> At least not on a stream. My cat is snoring right next to me and loudly smacking her lips. Oh, that's so cute. <clears throat> Super excited they got Tails' actual voice actor for the movie. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Actually, I think I did hear that at some point, but I'd forgotten. It's been on my vision board for years. <clears throat> what does Glim Glim Truther mean? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, um... <laughs> Kind of a long story. Well, Glim Glim was an episode of Monsters. You can go back and watch. I did do a video on that one. It was before I quit making the Monsters videos. <clears throat> Sorry, let me get some water really quick. Blue Justice trademark pending. <laughs> okay, so Glim Glim was an episode of Monsters that it was a Christmas episode and like the monster in it was friendly, but he died in the end and it was really tragic and awful. And uh, I don't know, me and my friend were just watching that movie, that episode last night. Oh, okay, you remember the name now. Yeah, me and my friend were watching that episode last night and we were joking about changing our, our Twitter names to like Justice for Glim Glim and stuff like that. <laughs> I went with Glim Glim Truther, and I forget what she went with. Glim something. 
<clears throat> Jim Carrey once again proving that the creators knew what they were doing in regards to casting. Oh, I missed George George's message before he deleted it. Yeah, Jim Carrey was a great Robotnik, even if he wasn't a traditional Robotnik in the first movie. <clears throat> yeah, well, the first trailer for Sonic, uh, Sonic 2 was certainly better than the first trailer for Sonic 1. <laughs> Sorry if that was loud. <clears throat> I'm trying to look something up really quick. I'm trying to, I was talking about, oh, Glimanon supporter is what my friend changed her name to on Twitter. <laughs> Glimanon. Uh. Yeah, we got a little goofy last night. That's what happens when you watch a really depressing Christmas episode. <clears throat> Gosh, I will go to sleep thinking of Dr. Robotnik in drag as a less... What? Oh, because <laughs> of the Sonic and Silent Hill thingy. Oh, I explained the episode, so your question need not be asked. Okay. <laughs> Sonic 2 seems to have done a Transformers 2 by having Agent Stone now work in a restaurant <laughs> I didn't catch that that's funny <clears throat> as someone who primarily knows the games and boom TV show Eggman should be a comedic villain in my eyes yeah that works The men in black have gotten to him again. So over there. Is there a so? Hey, baby boy, want to come up here? Want to be in the studio? So? Come here. Ugh. He's so heavy. He's so heavy. Here he is. Here's my big old so. <laughs> what are you looking at? He's trying to look at the chat. <laughs> he hates being picked up. <laughs> So, what? There we go. <laughs> Hoping they introduce other characters in future Sonic movies. I want to see Knuckles get flustered by Rouge. Oof, I don't. <laughs> I kind of hope they stop at Knuckles. Ugh. <clears throat> Hmm. I definitely don't want to see Amy in a Sonic movie. <clears throat> Specifically, Agent Stone works in a coffee shop called the Mean Bean. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I did not catch that. I've only seen the trailer like twice, and I, I wasn't really looking for things like that. That's awesome, Mean Bean. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I know. I remember the bit where he was shouting, he's back, but I didn't really notice that he was in a restaurant. <laughs> Everyone's talking about Soul now. <laughs> he's just checking that we're all still saying nice things about him. <laughs> Indeed, who could say anything bad about Soul? Well, I think I'm going to wrap up. It's nearly five and I've run out of things to watch. In fact, I ran out of things to watch a while back. Excuse me. Shadow could be awesome if they make fun of his edgelord personality. That's true. If they played it right, Shadow might be kind of a fun character. 
<clears throat> they also probably shouldn't introduce the Chow species. Probably wouldn't translate well. Mm. Oh yeah, probably. Well, it depends though. They can leave off Big the Cat, that's for sure. I don't think anyone would miss him. <laughs> Let's just pray that they don't include silver in it. I don't know anything about that character except what he looks like. <clears throat> thing about Amy is that thanks to Sonic X, she became a yandere and it's become very easy for her to veer into very unlikable territory. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, what am I going to do next Saturday? Good question. I meant to talk about that. Um, I'm probably going to play um, uh, Oxygen Not Included on Saturdays for a while until I get tired of it. <laughs> I'll considering play I'll continue playing Silent Hill 2 during the week, but I think on weekends I'm gonna play Oxygen Not Included. Oh my throat's getting tired. <clears throat> yeah, Sonic Tails and Knuckles will do. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Big right as I mentioned him probably. Soul, shut up. Soul is crying like a big baby. I still like Shadow, even if he's the product of Ott's edginess. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty funny that John St. John does the voice of Big the Cat. I would not have known that if I hadn't heard him mention it somewhere. Potential My Little Pony Red... Dwarf Vlogs reactions? Oh, that's a thought. I don't know, though. Well, definitely not My Little Pony, because Hasbro has monetized every single one of those videos, and they're not going to stop. Um, yeah, Red Dwarf wouldn't be good either, because uh, because um, BBC would probably pl claim them. <laughs> Always tend to be more tolerant of hated characters. I am too sometimes. Big is well liked in Japan. I didn't know that. Soul wants more attention. Here's what Soul does. He'll wander into another room and just start crying. Like, I'm so lonely. Where is everybody? And I'm like, I'm in here, you big idiot. <laughs> mommy, mommy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly like that. He's such a pain in the butt. I don't know why he does that. Everything I know of Shadow I learned from Sonic All-Stars Racing. He's good to play in that. <laughs> <clears throat> That's interesting. Well, we found one good use for, <laughs> for Shadow. <clears throat> He's good in that one racing game. The reflection on my door makes it look like I have two Christmas trees. Oh yeah, it does kind of. <clears throat> if only. <laughs> then again, that would be one more tree to decorate, so <laughs> having two Christmas trees in this wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. Because he's a cat, that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Half the things they do don't make any sense. Shadow is the pyramid head of the Sonic franchise. <laughs> they were good in their debut game, and then they quickly became overrated and overused. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> oh, the Let's Player Proton John. Oh, okay. I was thinking... I was thinking maybe Proton John was his uh, username on Twitter or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Shadow's better than most non traditional Sonic characters. I'll take your word on that. Okay, Justine, thanks for stopping by. 
So that's a shame that the movies can't use characters from the Archie Sonic comics. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> because your nephew is 16 months old, your sister put up a felt tree with Velcro decorations. That's cute. <clears throat> I didn't realize Shadow was in uh, I didn't realize Shadow was in Sonic Adventure 2 I didn't think he showed up before his own game Bark the Polar Bear <laughs> you've got to be making those up I'm just thankful one of Sega's mandates is that Sonic cannot have a canonical love interest. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that means no Amy, I hope. Fandom is too fractured for a cannon ship. Yeah, that too. <clears throat> okay, well, I should really wrap up here. It's actually after five, so... I don't know who Ken Penders is. Um, so thanks for joining me, everybody. Thanks for the donations. Um, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 is his first appearance. Um, I've already talked about what I'm going to do next week and next weekend. So, yeah. I guess I'll just end it here. It's going to be a bit abrupt, but whatever. <laughs> uh, where's my... There it is. Bean and Bark are the names of characters. Oh my god. They first appeared in Sonic Fighters. Okay. Both also cameo as part of a boss fight in Sonic Mania. That's interesting. Which brings us to the Sonic movie's greatest achievement, getting the Sonic fandom to agree on something. <clears throat> Okay, George, thanks for stopping by. Or at least a version of Amy where all she has is a case of hero worship. Yeah, that might not be too bad. Okay, now I'm going to end. <laughs> I wanted to get caught up on the chat real quick first. So, yeah, 